Hey everyone, this is Day Trader Rockstar, and today is a Friday. We're doing out some, putting out some re research videos. Also, going to be talking some markets here. Just want to uh, again, like I did, been doing is uh, doing some education on the ES here. And we start off the morning here, right at 9:30. We just want to show you something fast because when I, I start off on the cash, and I see that the cash here has been embedded up here on the five-minute uh, setup here, the five-minute time frame. It hasn't pulled back. It hasn't really. Uh, adjusted back down here and we start off with that and there's always a tendency for us to pull back uh, early in the morning when this is extended so we go back here to the futures chart and you can actually see that we have a dual stochastic setup here also so we start off the morning here even though it is a more volatile uh, time of the day we do start off with this uh, you know multiple time frame uh, setup right now so let's just watch this again we're going to continue what I've been doing here um, for the first week of this has been trading the ES uh, just on on very uh, specific patterns, the, uh, the lane divergence, the dual stochastic flag setup, and some other ones that have been really key. But I also like to trade the multiple time frame setups. And this again, like I said, this 3736 area, uh, 3650 area is that multiple time frame. So, but again, right at the open, things get really wild. Uh, you could easily push higher into this I, I kind of have a hands-off approach at this point and watching it and I just want to come back and uh, we'll start off the video here and we're going to come back to each setup and when I get back to you on each setup it should be um, I'll bring up the stage 5 platform and we'll take that trade but right now again just wanted to uh, let you know what you're going to be seeing in this video nothing right now again just watching the uh, early morning action here it just started up at 930 Now what's good about this, what I've been noticing in that first half an hour when we do get the uh, the more volatile uh, moves in the morning, usually get a move up or a move down and a, a counter move. But what I see usually when I do look for those lane divergences where I see the momentum shift or some kind of signal, it happens. It happens in this first half an hour, usually up to about 10 o'clock, a little after. And we look for maybe that uh, pattern. And, uh, you know, the lane divergence when we start we, when we see on a one minute chart how the lane divergence works out it's a more of a difficult um, pattern to recognize but we're going to look for the uh, uh, you know the stochastic to try to rotate back up here but fail but the price here making new highs and uh, you know it just really has to come out and you has to see it and once we see it then we can act on it but when we do look for it it usually happens in, in you know in the first half an hour of the uh, day. That's when I did notice a lot of lane divergences have played out. Uh, but right now, again, just uh, don't want to waste time on this video. Just want to explain some of the things we look for in the first half an hour. And right now, it's that, you know, the combination of this five minute stochastic uh, time frame and the five minute on the SP cash here, which is kind of embedded up here, which is usually a sign of strength. But in the morning, we do get those rotations, so we're going to look for that rotation back down. Um, even though we are con kind of consolidated here, we are c consolidated, we're pushed up here. Starting to see the VIX here spike up here, another uh, little volatility index, uh, the ETF here, which we are long here. And um, this usually reacts inverse of the overall market so if the markets do pull back, pull back the VIX will spike higher and the opposite holds true but again looking for this pullback here looking for the pullback is this a HPS type of setup well it could be you can see we're actually crossing back down here we got a little crossover we're not making re new highs we did kind of double top out here um, is it worth the entry it probably is for the downside but it's uh, it um, falls inside that very volatile time frame and also it doesn't really qualify for that rule because um, we're doing a real systematic approach to trading the futures here and just working off of certain patterns but this is a pattern I do like it's a multiple time frame pattern and we have the one minute and the five minute all lined up for a pullback we'll come back for the next setup There it is. <clears throat> a 
Well, I just got to come back here and show you that drop off. We had that beautiful drop off, but we kind of came right back down to a uh, 3350 area, which it looks like um, just was a, a profile line put in here from uh, some days back. But the key here was the dual stochastic here just got oversold. And again, it's so important to watch these dual stochastics. The reaction when they both line up and open market uh, time, you know, overnight here, sometimes you, you could get a little. Uh, flat line here and it's harder to read into it but once the market gets into uh, some more liquidity coming into market you can really see the reaction off of these um, so that first dual stochastic five minute setup gave us a little nice little flush there 37 to 34 and got oversold just got touched 20 on both and we spiked right back up and it's just in the beginning of the market here not much here um, looking at some individual patterns here we have a you know whenever we have some good pivots above us I draw that trend line up here and um, Again, I will uh, touch base when we see a trade setup. All right, you can see here we have a tradeometer overbought level. It just came in, uh, and if you go down to the uh, to the real time stats here, you can actually see there's this uh, twenty thirty eight fifty twenty thirty eight fifty, uh, and this represents you know some of the signals we like the multiple time frames we pay attention to uh, at this level. So let's just mark it off. Got a couple things that we pay attention to in that first first half an hour of the trade. I told you there's a lot of volatility here. We have that first tradeometer set up here uh, right at the open. We had that five minute set up and then we kind of got a little extended and we got that first flush. Now this is the second one that's just setting up and you can see the reaction right off of that level at 20.38.50. And that is um, just an awesome thing to have on your platform. Got on the platform here. I mean, overbought. And it kind of just gives you a yeah, you see the audio, you hear the audio alert, it kind of gives you an idea of how the, the market's setting up here. You know, it's just one of those timing indicators and multiple t time frames. Um, you're supposed to make sure, yeah, it doesn't mean that we still can't go higher. <clears throat> you know, the market here pushing on a very bullish mode could be an overbought for a while or it could be oversold up for a while. But at this point, this is where we start to look for some of the setups. And you can see some, you usually see a good reaction off of these levels. Gold is spiking hard here this morning really hard spike here in gold alright we've passed the uh, first hour and a half of the uh, day and to pick up where we left off um, we had to go back here around 10 o'clock and you can actually see the market actually pulled back um, once we bounced here it was a dual stochastic setup we moved all the way back up here we kind of route we went through this little trend line we popped right through then we got another dual stochastic um, tradeometer setup tradeometer setup again takes the uh, the different time frames on the ES and on the S&P and gives you those extreme levels so if they're bought overbought or oversold so these are really important to watch and I, there's a definite correlation uh, between the price movement and these overbought levels and you can see in some ta some cases you move a little bit higher but the, the majority of the time and again it's not a you know it, it's not the easiest to call the exact top. I mean, the market's exploring here levels. It's in a, a like a discovery mode, and it'll pop up here. It'll chop around, but the, the odds are, and you'll see that the the, the probability and statistic uh, results are that this market makes these bigger moves when you have all the time frames lining up, all the way from the one minute to the five minutes. So that, we're going to track that. We're going to continue to track that going forward. Um, I haven't taken a trade today, and it's because I've been looking for just certain setups, you know, the, either the divergence, um, maybe a coil, or uh, the dual stochastic flag setup. Now, you know, I'm considering just taking the tradeometer setups, but it's important to set our stops properly on that, because you could easily get a little push higher and, and end up getting chopped up a lot on these turns. So there should be another strategy, you know, to take the uh, multiple time frame entries or the tradeometer entries but there should be something else that goes along with them um, again I prefer just to take the flag setups the coils the divergences and I want to continue to just track those but as you can see we just got overbought on the dual stochastic um, I'll, I'll go back here check my five minute time frame that's Sony actually I'm looking at doing another research here and we're gonna go out to uh, that five minute time frame and you see we pulled back we didn't get it quite oversold we're not quite overbought so um, it's kind of you know in the middle of a uh, you know in, in the middle of a level here and for me I you know we could actually just kind of tighten up here we could this ends up being a, a bigger bigger pattern altogether I don't know 
but this is not a signal so we have to wait for those signals because with those signals this can move higher even though it's overbought because of the fi underlying five minute and you can start to see this if we saw this rotate back this stay pinned up here that would be my flag set up I would be I would be prone to take that so, but we'll watch it but it needs to set up properly right now it looks like a flag it looks like it'll pop up <laughs> I was just commenting to Paul on uh, on uh, on Yahoo I said, Paul, I'm just following the ES too much. I can't get any work done today. That's the important thing. I, I spend these Fridays trying to get the research out, uh, but then I'm trading also, and I do usually do act more active trading because now I'm able to really uh, concentrate, and I really do get into a concentrated mode. You can see I'm just, you know, kind of just mapping out every single thing and just feeling feeling the energy of the markets and feeling it feels great. I want to continue to do that, but I have other things to do here, so. I want to stop this video here and start with the watch list video. You know, the watch list, the HPS watch list video. This is the HPS for the futures, and there's going to be a new section coming to the HPS site about that. So look for that. I want to get a lot of information out on that tonight for you later on. So right now, I'll come back to it. I'll you'll break back into this uh, into this video. All right, I'll break back into this video and talk more about the setups if we happen to see it. Right now, it looks like that flag setup push up. Next thing I'll be looking for. And maybe a little divergence. Um, this will be a real minor divergence. We took out the highs here. We haven't rotated back up. If this failed and just crossed back over, that would probably be the divergence. But it's not. The, I like to see those divergence at the highs of the session. It's not the highs of the session. So we'll come back to it. We'll watch it. There's a good possibility that the divergence is happening here. We'll see. We'll see right now. Um, Con Edison pushing the highs of the day. So we're all going to go into the watch list for next week. I was going to put this out as a separate video, but you know what? I'm going to keep it just for the members. Um, so you're going to get this with the HPS video. This will be part of the HPS video. I'm already 10 minutes into it. Um, added to a couple of things today. Added to a Clorox short, CLX. And the CLX have been waiting for this. They've been kind of battling it out because it's, the, the market's been very strong. But you can see relative weakness today in this one. And we'll go to the daily. This is the first one. We could we could almost look at this as a rising uh, wedge pattern. The, the rising wedge on the coil was also there, and you know we haven't rotated back down. So I'm looking for that rotation back down, and that's usually, you know, gives us a good rotation uh, when we start to put, to put together these type of coils. You can easily see that it breaks back down here. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple other patterns here that we could actually uh, dive into. And look for some measured moves down and what the par so anyway ended ended up um add into that position and I think it looks pretty good. It's weak today. Um you know we're extended up here. Here was a little extension we dropped off. I mean here was seems like a another opportunity here. So Clorox here still on the watch list. Now as you see this was on the trade alert box. Actually this one hit its stop this week, you know market did push up. I'm, I actually held on to mine because it, was, it wasn't running away too bad. I mean, it wasn't overextended. We just kind of tagged that. And I hate when that happens. Just you go up there and tag it, but it's, it's set in the system that you get the alerts. So you got the alerts and it hit its stop. Now it seems to be pulling back. And then again, this I would like to reactivate this and um, just continue to maintain that stop there. And probably use that stop for now going forward because I think this has to be the uh, breakdown here. We're showing some relative weakness today seems like we're really extended we got the wedge pattern we got the coil the stochastic so uh, we'll reactivate this keep that stop at 102 and probably use that as our uh, exit area because if it does get back up there I'm not gonna fight with it anymore all right so you can see we're at 70 or at 20 here this is starting to look like a flag I want to bring up the Dom here see how this plays out and uh, do I have everything set up here? Yeah, I have a three tick profit uh, target here. And what we're going to do is we're going to see if this gets down under 20. This is going to hold 70, preferably get closer to this trend line, and just take that sh uh, take that long, saying that this is going to be actually going to be a flag. This is what we uh, usually concentrate on the flag setup. <laughs> I can see it on Paul's chart too. This is. Um, this is Keen, uh, one of the members, um, oh, what's his name, Pal Palk, Palk something, um, has been trading this pattern exclusively for the last two weeks and told me that he has 17 trades in a row he, he did. And that's un unbelievable, unbelievable. So I'm very happy about that. And I, I, 
you know, I was wondering what kind of feedback I could get. So if you do use this technique, let me know what type of feedback you have. All right, so I'm just going to put the buy market in here. We're just going to automatically take that. I just put it in there. Again, this is a testing phase. We're doing this for one month. <clears throat> and I'm basically, when I take these positions, you know, we're going to just, they're just going to get recorded. I didn't put a limit order in here. I might have got a bad fill, you know. I want the pattern to play out. I want to put my notes. I want to go back, put this through the trade an, uh, analyzer uh, after 30 days, and we'll see how many of the patterns played out, what was the uh, the results of everything, and uh, hopefully videos go, go along with it. There'll be a whole beautiful educational section on a couple different patterns because you're going to be impressed, I think. You're going to be impressed. All right. So we'll let this play here, just just because we have it going on here. It might take, God, if this takes 15 minutes, this watch list is going to be real long. <clears throat> so, and you wish, you know, when you deal with the futures, the biggest thing I my problem is it's just kind of maintaining the. Uh, you know the patience you know it's like come on let me do something i take my eyes off of it you want to go you start watching every tick it's like the longest, <laughs> longest amount of time you just gotta let these things play out you really do don't you get let your emotions get involved and then it's you know you start to lose the edge you let it you let it trigger you just you know even put it down to go to something do something else have your bra bracket order in there if it works it works it doesn't doesn't it could be news that comes out that affects the market it could be anything, and uh, you know, on the occasion, sometimes these won't work out. But I would say so far, uh, you know, 80% is a good, good uh, conservative number on this pattern when we see it, uh, you know, kind of play out. doing here see if I can tune him in I hear I hear popcorn popcorn I hear it so this would be the ideal entry let's add one so we just added one this is, this looks like, uh, you know, we're down by that lower trend line. There's not much talk, not much going into that lower trend line, though. And let's mark this off here, because this is where you really... Really, really, really like this this zone here. I'm not gonna write this down. I would definitely consider that the dual stochastic flag setup. Take a look at that five-minute chart. I always sometimes forget that five-minute chart could could be a uh, an issue, especially if it's really turning down and going down hard. Here it's kind of um, it's a tough call. There, it's kind of flatlining. Um, I'm fine with it. You know, like I said, I think this pattern alone is just such a great pattern that I would take it no matter what. I did hold off of it a couple of days ago, and. Uh, you know, because of the five minute, and it ended up working out fine. You know, it would have, it would have, it would have hit its profit. 
So let's get this move up to 37, uh, uh, 3750 at least. We'll get that taken out of that one. And then we have to work on that 38 level. So I'm looking at the, um, we're doing this on the stage five platform. And uh, if you're using the stage five platform, they come with a nice chart here. Uh, looks like it has a little volume profile uh, chart next to it, volume chart underneath. You could put your indicators in there. I haven't messed with it too much, but it looks like there's a lot of different uh, features uh, available here. So something also and again e very easy to sign up and just try out that demo that's what we're doing we're trying it out for a month you know working these patterns and then uh, basically you have the choice then to uh, you know take it for a spin see I'm trying to uh, figure out why <laughs> why this is not moving Take so long. It's like a textbook setup here. Hope it plays out. I mean, this is what we're here for. Sorry for the uh, the uh, the um, the road the um, detour the detour from the uh, let's talk about the other uh, stocks here. See that's what happens. Chile said, "Hey, don't get too involved with ES because you'll forget about the stocks." And that's one thing I love is the stocks. I mean, so we're going to talk a little bit more about that right now. So we talked about the Clorox here. That was the first short, and then the CAG is another short, even though it's um, you know we kind of pinpoint that last I said watch out that 16 minute time frame is getting set up it's probably gonna pop here and it popped right up um, and I saw that I was like well you could take it was acting okay what we have here is a coil stochastic upward channel here and that's fine I know that we're in the uh, we're in the area we're in the area here um, you know getting really squeezed up there and even have a smaller channel Kind of have just a little even smaller channel just squeezing this up here so we're really in an area where we're probably going to get a reaction uh, to the downside you know we're up here and we haven't tested this level in a long long time so and this channel here definitely see some downside here but man I and mean, talk about being in this uh, market at this point right now that's the big thing Let's let it so um this uh that set up um Canagra C A G that is still set up so let's take a look at it on the HPS All right, might as well just stay here for a second. It's very quiet. Normally during the during the show you'd be here in my background pit here. My background pit. So it's a little more entertaining. You can hear some things going on. Let's actually go down. Let's bring up, uh, let's bring up Ben here for a f fast. I'll go we'll sign into the dashboard. I'll hear RPM. Let's hear what RPM has to say. Let's hear what Ben has to say here. Seven quarter offer right. and the mini traded the thousand. They so we just got taken out for one. Seven half bidding out comes in. Half bidding out for you once again. Seven half bidding out. I'm at seven eighty. Seven half bidding out for you. I'm a half. And now you're playing with house money, so you could actually push this to break even. Seven half bidding out. I'm at seven eighty again. And I think you get, there's a button here for that. 
But hopefully by the time I find that button, it'll take us out already. Moving up here. Seven on the screen. Seven half bit in on a matty. Coming even. at me at one time. Sorry for a little half silence here. For you once again. I'm an outright seven half bit in on a half bit at eight even here now. You Dow is uh, here negative six points from an SP five hundred six. SP five hundred up a point. Seven twenty video now fades here crazy, now. Uh, even video now for you once again. Already. Seven twenty. So at this point, you got a nice profit, and again. It's so hard sometimes to get that full point. Uh, uh, well, let's turn this down, turn pull down. Sometimes it's hard to get that uh, first point. See, I really have to either just move that to break even or rise, you know, kind of have a trailing stop on it. Um, I think I will do that. I think I'll bring this up just under break even. But again, this is not a strategy type of thing. This is a pattern testing. Uh, you know, project that we're doing right here. And so we're not talking about strategies. So we'll get other experts on here. We'll talk about some of the ways we could scale out, um, you know, protect our profits, move to uh, levels like that. How did Paul get back on? I thought I muted him. Not that I wanted to mute him, but... Oh, I don't want to did. I took it. And we had the tradeometer here starting to get a little extended. So, you know, remember, our big question is, our big uh, understanding is once this gets back up to above 80, this pattern is complete. This move, as long as from a fast rotation, because that's, that's, that's all I want. So even as I get closer to that, I'm considering this. I have the trend line. I have the flag. We have a little, maybe I'll just consider getting the hell out of Dodge here. Maybe move my stop right underneath the price now. And uh, that way, I'm just going to move it up there. And uh, there, I got taken out. So, you know, because I knew it was running up against that 80. You know, it's just about tagging. I guess I could have waited a second. It's probably going to pop now. But I'm working on that. All right, I'm working on that. My job here right now is to identify the best patterns in the market to trade. And, you know, I always say the easy part is getting in. The hard part is getting out, you know, and, and doing that. But glad that we got to do that so and we'll come back to the next next time we see another good setup like this I'll come to you but we'll also you know might as well follow this up there's probably a decent flag probably gonna break higher <laughs> I left a, a million dollars on the table yeah it did it probably would have took us out right there yeah all right um let's go back to the research here I want to see I get sidetracked and this video will be 10 hours long See, it looks like we now if you come, you always think twice, like, wow, that spike up here pushes right up against the trend line. We kind of, you know, is it true? Is it we're going to pull right back into that pattern, maybe set up again, you know? Never know. But this is, you, you know more about this setup than you know about what's happening now. And the, the fact is, this setup, this setup, this setup, this setup, we have things that at least let us know that these setups are setting up. So, you know what I want to do now? I want to stop this video. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to do the other video. It's going to get too long, and people are going to get it uh, stuck in their computer. So I'm going to send this out as a separate video, and then we're going to do the regular watch list and add on. So this is part one. Looks like market here. About to uh, move back here. But I'm going to stop this and just start again.